Right, this is the EGR map that we found in the last video. I've left it at exactly the same point that we were at when we were watching the last video. Here we've got data for our EGR map and here we've got a 2D representation but turn the other way around. If we look at <laughs> if we look at it, look, there's those bits. I'll move that over there. So there's those bits and there's those bits, but turn the other way around. So we've got a representation of it like that. Now let's have a look at some of these numbers because there's something a little bit odd about these numbers. And the easiest way to look at them is to have two sets of numbers open at once. So let's get the text open. That's all grey at the moment. If we press delete, that will get that. That will always be yellow now. You found that map. It's over here. It will always be yellow. Right, now there's the, our original numbers. Now I'm going to just run the scroll reel up on the mouse. So I just move that up a little bit so that it gives me a bit more room. And I'm going to click and drag that one up a bit. Now I can see two versions of the same thing. Look. 8,500 but there it's 08,500. Now Winolds when it produces this map will always ignore unused noughts at the beginning. So that's nothing new. Computers have been doing that since they were invented. So it will ignore that naught at the beginning. So I will get 8,500 which is the same as that. So that, that is okay. So I've got sets of numbers. Now the big problem here is making the numbers make sense. If I double click on the middle of there what I will get is a properties box and the properties box is for that data that's in the middle and the whole map and it's basically saying to me here's a map and I've given it that name so in other words Winolds has given it that name. Now I'm going to rename that to EGR map. I'm going to give it a description because of what it is. I'm going to call it the mass airflow because it is actually the mass airflow through the mass airflow meter which some people refer to as AMM. It is probably measured in milligrams per stroke so I'm going to put milligrams per stroke in there. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and look at some of these other things. I've got this factor offset thing here and I've got this here and it says 1 now I know from experience of engines that I am never going to get a flow rate of 8,500. For a 2 litre engine I can expect a flow rate in the region of 1,000. The addition of a turbocharger might give me a little bit more air flow rate but I'm certainly going to have a figure in the area of 1,000, not 8,500. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 0.1. <coughs> That will multiply 8,500 by 0 0.1 and give me, look what we've got, 850. 850 is not that different to 1,000, so I suspect that I've now got output figures that are more sensible. I've got a maximum airflow figure of 850. So I'm going to say to myself, yeah, I'll accept that. Now at this point, if I click X, I will lose whatever changes I've made, so I'll click OK. Right, let's look at what else we've got. This information here goes up to 51. 51 what? Well, if we double click on that, that will open and it's telling us it's the x axis. Now, when I was just decided that's IQ, IQ is short for injection quantity. Now, I'm going to accept that as being correct. Milligrams per stroke, I'm going to accept that as being correct. 0.01, I'm going to accept that as being correct. And down here I've got precision of 1. Now, why have I accepted 0.01? Well, the reason I've accepted 0.01 is because I want that to read as 51. If it was 0.1, it would read as 510, so 510. And if it was 1, it would read as 5,100. Now, I know that a figure of about 50, 51, up, up to about 70 or 80 is a quite sensible injection quantity. If this figure was above 100, I would be suspicious that something was odd. 
Now this precision number is simply how many decimal points I want, so that's my choice. If I only want to see one decimal point value after the decimal point, then I put 1. If I want to see 2, then I put 2 and it becomes 51 and I get 2 noughts. There might be occasions when I want 2 noughts, but on this occasion I'm going to leave it as 1. I'm going to say, yep, that's all OK, I'll accept that information. There we are, there's an, the other axis there, so I'm going to double click that axis. Y axis it's telling me. Don't worry about that, I'll explain later. It's suggesting it's engine speed, it's suggesting that that's measured in revs per minute. Now, your first attempt at doing this, you may not get any suggestions. Winnows is putting these suggestions out because I've used this program before, so there is an, a degree of recognition involved. If the program hasn't been used before, the chances are there is no recognition and these boxes will all be empty and you'll have to make your best guess. Right, now down here, Winnows has made its best guess and guessed wrong by a mile. If I change 0 0.01 to 1, look what it's done to this figure down here. If I go back to 0 0.01, which it was, if revs per minute is right, 54 revs per minute? I don't think so. So we'll get rid of that and we'll make it 1. And we'll say ignore the precision because we don't need any. We could put naught, but we won't bother. We don't need any at all, so we'll ignore it. And we'll say OK. So what we appear now to have is an revs per minute for this map, injection quantity for this map, and an output. And these are the X or the Y axes, depending on which way around they go. And this is changeable. So don't get hung up on thinking, oh, this is the X and that's Y, or that's X and that's Y, because it's not. So if you're looking at an X axis and someone else has got their computer and they're looking at an X axis, it's possible that the X you're looking at is the Y they're looking at, because the two are interchangeable. So you need to describe which axis you're looking at, not just mention X and Y. This is often called the Z axis, it's the output from the map. So in other words, we've got these two axis functions and here's the output from our map. This output is basically what the engine or the ECU is being told is a reasonable airflow rate for this amount of fuel and those sorts of revs. So that's what we're being shown on that map. Now normally you wouldn't worry too much about that because you're just changing map data but I'm just because this is a beginner's guide I'm giving a slight more information about that as we go. Right there we are then so we've got our EGR map and we've got most of the information that we need to go with our EGR map and we again can look at it in 3D view. Oh it's gone. Don't worry if it does that. Use your mouse scroll up and with a little bit of luck, as you scroll up, a warning will appear. Please click to optimise view. And there we are. And if you get any extra coloured bits in it that you don't want, don't worry about those. There are highlights that have been put in by Winnows. Click delete and they have gone out of the way. So there we are. There is our map in 3D view. 2D view is the original view, but somewhat squashed down to not easy to see. And there we are in text view. Now at this point it is worth pointing out where did this information come from. Now we've already seen that this information is that big block of information there, just slightly altered by a factor. Now where did this information come from? Well if we look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 columns, look and over here 13 by 16, so 13 columns. If we go up here and have a quick search around, look, there we are, we've got the number 13 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's the access data, so there's the map data for the output, this bit, and that's the access data for one of the axes, and it's for the one that's got 13 units in it. That one. So when we're forced to do this on our own with no help from Winnows, one of the things that we can look for is if we know how many of these we want, 
we can go and look for a number that corresponds to the number that we want. So if we know that we want 16 rows, we can go and look for 16 rows. And look, there it is, 16 rows. 16, and if we count those, there will be 16. If you're doing this on your own, though, because Winholes hasn't done it for you, don't get tripped up by these. Just in front of the 16 there, there's a number. That's a reference number in the hex dump. Now, Winholes uses that reference number to find maps. Don't you use that number. And if we look here, let's go and find our 13. Look, there's a reference number in front of that one. And again, you don't use that number. So you won't ever need to use that number or that number unless you become a super super duper expert in searching for files and decide you want to use those reference numbers to help you search. But as a beginner you won't want those numbers and you won't want anything to do with those numbers. So when you're looking for an axis you'll be saying to yourself how many digits has it got? Oh it's got 16. Right I'll search for 16. Oh there it is. And the 16 is of no use to you when you're looking for an axis, only to find it. The information you will want is the 16 digits, these. And for 13, it will be these, these 13, not the actual number 13 or the number 16. They just help make it easier for you to find it. Right, what I'm going to do is you can see now that there is no magic close box down here. So for this one, I'm just going to click X to close it. And I'm going to stop there for this video and start the next one looking for a different map just to reinforce what we've done so far.